What do you think your father would think of um, the TV business today? My father? Yeah. Uh, he'd look at it as an opportunity. He'd be excited. Dad was a... Um, Dad wasn't a, you know, he wasn't a businessman. He was a real... He really loved the craft and uh, he didn't regard himself as working for a particular network. He regarded himself as a television man, mm -hmm. I think, as well. And uh, he would be... He'd be passionate about it. Um, he's, uh, you know, he was on a digital way before he, in his, before he died at seven. He was used to go checking out 9MSN and he was into all the... And, you know, he started really put an edge to breakfast television in England. So, like, mate, he'd be ecstatic. At, you know, listen, these are tough, tough jobs sometimes, but, Jesus, you're lucky to have them. And for all of us who work in this business, I think it's an honour. And uh, as, long as, you, as long as you look at the world as it is, not as you'd like it to be, you'll be okay. As soon as you look at it as the way you'd like it to be, you're going to get in trouble because it moves fast under your feet and uh, the punters have no remorse and no loyalty you got to keep delivering what you told them you're delivering and then they'll back you. If you don't, you're gone. You've got some uh, new competitors on the block, as in, not a bit of a punt there, but as in um, 10 and, no, and 7, Jim's taken a roll yep, up yep. and Hamish has come on board. you got any advice for them? Uh, Tim doesn't need a lot of advice, mate. Tim's yeah. a good operator. He's been doing this for a long, long time and he's uh, he comes from, the, from, I think, at the moment, the right place. Traditionally, a lot of people came through sales. Tim's a... You know, he's a journo, and then he was uh, on air, and and then uh, at news guy at Perth, and now programmer. And yet only, only 12 months ago, Tim was. We were talking about this the other day. Only 12 months ago, he was the head of programming. So while Tim's well supported, and having the Stokes is around you, Kerry, you're not going to get much over Kerry Stokes in this business, and the people he's got around him. Tevin won't break because Tim won't let it break because he understands the game, and so they're all. They'll, they'll go through their ups and downs, but it won't. It won't go off the rails. Um, I think for uh, for Hamish, he's an accomplished mark. You know, I think if he gets given the ha give, get, gets luck and they get a good program, they'll certainly know what to do with it. They come from a you know, very strong advertising pedigree, the three guys that are in there now. So you can imagine if they see a good product, they'll know how to really extract all the value out of it. And that's what you've got to do. So they just got to hope they get lucky. They just got to keep their eyes open to know where to look to get lucky. Um, Saying what strategy you're going to have and all these sorts of things is nice, but the fact is, you probably might better keep your head down and just pray for some luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, well, we might uh, open up the floor for some questions. Um, Tim. Chris Chow asks, what is the worst part of your job? What's the worst part of my job? Uh, the 24 7 gets you a bit sometimes, you get worn down, or you're. you're uh, where was I the other day? I was in LA. I was in LA the other day, and it, there was a furor because we did a look-alike on the footy show of a baby who looked like Sterlo and it looked very ugly. And the family was horrified that we'd done it. <laughs> and then you kind of go, "Why? Okay, let's go and say sorry for doing that." And then you go, "Why have we embarrassed somebody?" And then why is someone ringing me at midnight in America because we've done this or that to somebody? And so it, it's it's unrelent the, the unrelentingness gets to you. But at the same time, I kind of thrive on it. So I kind of, I'm a bit of a, I'm an addict to this. So I don't know. Everything's bad some days and everything's good most days. <laughs> Lee McCluskey asks, what will this week's deal mean for the South Australian landscape? So obviously referring to the wind deal. Yeah, um, yeah it's a good question. We just, um, we just had a meeting about that last night. Is that it's gonna, we're going to put as much energy into Adelaide and give Adelaide an opportunity in, and to respect us. I don't believe we've given that every opportunity through... We're going to have to make some significant investments. I think they've got, you know, most important identification down there is going to be their news brand. Um, they have a very good news director who's been there for a long time. He's been given a tough hand because of the cost restrictions. And I don't disrespect the cost restrictions because <coughs> when you're an affiliate, that's the hand you're dealt. You don't have any input into programming. You extract all the value. It's up to us to modernise, respect... Um, um, the Adelaide community, so they feel I've got something to champion. And so it's going to be up to us to make local program and don't just ride into town thinking you can do all these things and then ride out the other side. We've got to be here to stay. And they've got to be... It's, this is a game of millimetres, this business. And we're a cluster of stations that make up a network. We're not a network. So the stations are the things that give you the... that give you your personalised identity. Not dissimilar. It's always been to newspapers. You know, News Corp's a cluster of newspapers that make up a corporation. So we're the same... We look at the same way, so... We're just going to get in there and give it a lot of energy and give the mark a lot of respect and see how we go. Morning, David. Chris Walton from Quantium. Um, hey, Chris. You talked a lot about the change 
kind of in, in media landscape. What, one thing that hasn't changed too much in recent years is how media is actually bought and sold. So what changes do you see happening in that area over the next three or four years? Um, well, obviously trading platforms and those sorts of things, and I think a lot of the debate's always going to be with the, between us and the, and, the, and the buyers, is how you trade our inventory. You know, we're always going to fight to say you can't trade at that big a discount. You're always going to fight to say you can. I think there clearly needs to be a couple of things. We need to understand where put more investment in, which we're about to start doing through Oztam and those things, to identify on mobile devices. And this is the big question of television everywhere, of ensuring that when it is everywhere, and going back to what I said about cricket, more people are watching and always have watched it because of pubs and clubs and tent sites and, and holiday units and those things, is trying to work out the mechanics to uh, demonstrate who is watching. So we've got accuracy in our data which is obviously imperative to, to um, clients. Um, you know, the game that we've always played with against each other is, is uh, you know, who's getting one over what, and so I'll try and do everything I can to get it over the media buyers, and the media buyers will do everything they can to get it over me. So it's going to be a, a constant, you know, who, who can gain, gain... First, the most important thing, and setting an answer is better than I can, is accuracy of information. So when something does something, it's right, and the person who's buying that gets clarity of what it did. Then it's going to be, how do you trade our inventory? Um, and I'm not the right person to ask. I'm not, I'm not as familiar with this, you know, all the all the, all the the day-to-day discussions that Pete Wilshire and his team's going on. But I think it's just going to be the, um, I, I want to make sure I'm tracking when we do something good, people know it's good, or when we do something bad, people know it's bad. Peter Petrovsky asks, um, when will Nine become a digital first company? When that means you make more money than what we're doing now. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to run away to digital. To be frank, the whole time I want to make sure it's part and parcel. But you know, what is digital these days? I'd like to ask some people too. It's, you know, television principles haven't changed for me in 50 years. It's the way it's distributed and the storytellings and those things are a bit different. But um, no, I don't want to be. If, if if you're good, you don't have to be first at anything in regard to when you're a licensed operated business, which is would sound like an old old person's thing to say. But the fact is we're still nimble enough to be able to move when we see something good, partner up with somebody. Um, you know, we've got partnerships with Twitter at, uh, at 9 MSN. We do many things with lots of different suppliers these days that still want to do... Microsoft still spend a lot of money with us. Google spend money with us. So we're still relevant enough to make a noise for people. But to say we're digital first... We're not a digital company in that sense. We don't, we, we're, a, we're a marketing and content creation company and distribution company. And I want to be really, really good at that. I don't want to be... And we're not taking on the apples and those things. We're just doing what we do as well as we possibly can. And hopefully those people, we can support their initial, their ideas through marketing. After reality, what's the next big genre? Uh, we'll just go back to drama again and another form of reality and lots of social <coughs> media, social experiments and there's lots of hidden camera type um, uh, on workplaces going on around the world and those sorts of things. So... I think uh, transformations are still, you know, there's people interested, the blocks and interesting dynamic house rules has improved over the last couple of weeks with its reveals. Um, the magazines are still selling 750,000 copies a week with showing how people look different and it's time to time. So they're still the same things that have been working for 10 years, just the time will come around again for them. Well, thank you. David Douglas Wright from Wright's PR. Um, what what did uh, Nine and the other networks, or should Nine and the other networks, have, have learnt from that backlash against Waterhouse and the and the comments from government, both sides of politics, from the AFL um, and from the public? Were there were there learnings to be taken out of that? Yeah, I guess that uh, the learning I think for for, for you, know, and, you know the ball falls at my feet on this one too is that excuse the pun is that um, we believe in. If it, in, we've got a moral compass to provide to the community at the same time as we don't have a wowser barometer either to tell you how to all to suck eggs, which is a free world. You should be able to smoke, drink and gamble when you want to or do whatever you think is within the laws. We, I think the lightning rod of Tom Waterhouse was Tom being the way he is and then he's advertising because he's not doing a hell of a lot more than TAB was or anyone else was doing. So again, we also have a government that reacts pretty quickly to any negative press. Um, that, and I think Tom, Tom became the lightning rod of that. I think his competitors were saying how bad it was. Well, you know, when the, mar when the mafia say the triads are no good, it's normally like, 
You know, you know if, that's, if, that's the th if that's the world they all think they're all playing in, or when nine starts telling you how bad seven is, you know, well, hang on, what's going on here, right, is that I think we over-egged it and I think we've pulled back from it. Um, and, you know, it, personally and emotionally, for being a father of a new child, I don't want my child saying all the odds either. But at the same time, it's the way you do it. People are allowed to receive information. <laughs> it's legal. It's, if it's done properly, I think we pushed it too far. I respect that. But I think equally, we all don't want to be jumping on the, the bandwagon of something that um, has been around for a while. And that doesn't make, if you don't like it, it's still horrific to you, as far as the people are concerned. If you've got to be like we are, we've got to be 51, 49 all the time because we're a free to wear India lounge room and everyone's got a different opinion. So we'll give you those opinions. Did we overstep the mark on too much? Maybe for, maybe when the first couple of weeks when Tom was with the commentators, that was the case. I probably got too driven on sports, sport. You know what you're watching. That's what the information that some sports people want without the thought enough of there are a lot of kids watching there absorbing this and not and seeing that this is not good information for them. So we've pulled back from that now and I think um, it's the right balance. Is this still a good industry to start a career in? Yeah, I think it's an amazing industry to start a career in. It depends on, you know, what part of it you want to be. There's, if you want to get into content creation, there's going to be more ways to distribute it. We, we all see that. and Or we see so many people, young people on YouTube channels, etc. I think that um, the economics are slightly tougher than they were. But again, if you're good at what you do, you'll be really well rewarded. So if you work really hard at it and you've got a gift or you're creative, um, I think it's a really exciting place to work. It's up to people like myself and my management team to make it feel exciting to work at. Um, but I actually got an email yesterday from a, on Monday from a kid, it's his first day at Channel 9, 18. He said, I can't believe, because we sent out an eight on the cricket, he said, I can't believe I'm working at Channel 9. It's an amazing, it's amazing, it's an amazing to be working in television at a place like Channel 9 on such a significant day. You know, he might be an urge or he wants to get up the, fight, up the, up the thing, but <laughs> I liked it, right? <laughs> but I think that, um, I think that um, it does have all the same opportunity, if not more, than it did in the past. Have you promoted him? Not yet, but I'll find out who he is and give him a... 